Three months into my relationship with Emma, I found myself sitting on the edge of the bed, staring at the ceiling, a knot forming deep in my stomach. I replayed her words over and over, searching for any sign, any warning I might have missed in those early days. I remembered telling her, clear as day, when we first got together, cheating is a hard no for me. It's something I can't look past. She had nodded, understanding, reassuring me with her quiet strength and calm demeanor. At that moment, I believed her. Now three months later, the weight of the past was bearing down on both of us. Emma had shared pieces of her life before her strict upbringing as a Jehovah's Witness, how she left the faith at 23, and the toll it took on her mentally. She told me how the religion controlled every aspect of her existence, how she wasn't even allowed to talk to people outside of the faith for years. When she spoke about it, her voice was hollow, a sadness lingering just beneath the surface. It had taken her five years to even begin unraveling the layers of conditioning she was shackled with. That much, I could understand. But this, this was something else entirely. The night before, her words hit like a punch to the gut, leaving me breathless. I need to tell you something, she had said, her voice trembling. We were lying in bed, her head nestled against my chest, and I could feel the tension in her body, like an electric charge. I shifted, pulling her closer instinctively. What's going on? Emma sat up slowly, hugging her knees to her chest. She couldn't meet my eyes. Her hair fell in dark waves over her face, hiding her expression. I reached out to brush it aside, but she pulled away slightly, a gesture that sent a jolt of unease through me. I, I cheated once. In a past relationship, she said, her voice cracking. At first, the words didn't register. I blinked, trying to process what she had just confessed. What? I asked, dumbfounded. Tears welled up in her eyes. She wiped them quickly, as if ashamed of her vulnerability. It was years ago, in a relationship I had after leaving the church. He wasn't a good guy, not at all. But, I was unfaithful. I felt like the ground had opened up beneath me. My head spun and my heart started to race. But, you said cheating is a deal-breaker too, I mumbled, my voice barely above a whisper. You said it was in the past, but you never mentioned this. Emma shook her head, her whole body shaking now. It was such a toxic relationship. He was abusive in so many ways. I don't want to make excuses, but I was in a terrible place. And it happened. Only once, but it happened. Why? I blurted out, feeling the overwhelming urge to make sense of it, even though part of me already knew the answer. Her shoulders slumped as she exhaled heavily. I don't know. He, he was controlling, manipulative. He made me feel worthless, like I didn't deserve better. I was desperate for affection, validation, something. But even after I did it, I hated myself for it. I felt disgusted. It was like I was continuing the cycle of everything that had been done to me. That's when she started to tell me about the older man from her past, the first person she had ever been with. She described him as predatory, how he had exploited her naivety, her innocence, using her lack of understanding about relationships and sex to manipulate her. At the time, she hadn't known any better. She had been raised in a community where she was told sex was only for marriage and yet this man, who was married himself, had convinced her otherwise. He had been 27. She had been 20. He messed me up so badly, in ways I can't even explain, she said softly, eyes glazed with the memories. For the longest time, I thought being sneaky, hiding things, that was normal. That was all I knew. It was how he taught me to survive in a relationship. There was a long pause between us the silence punctuated only by the sound of her quiet sobs. She looked so small, so broken sitting there, hugging herself for comfort. You're not like that anymore, are you? I finally asked, my voice hoarse, not even sure if I wanted to hear the answer. Emma shook her head vigorously. No, no. I swear. I've been in other relationships since then, 
and I never cheated on anyone else. I've changed, I promise. I brought it up because I couldn't hide it from you, not after you told me how much cheating bothers you. I needed to be honest, even if it might ruin what we have. I didn't know what to say. The room felt like it was closing in on me. I stared at her, torn between empathy and betrayal. I could see how much this was hurting her, how much she regretted her past actions, but it didn't make the sting any less painful. Why didn't you tell me earlier? I finally managed to ask. Because I didn't know how, she admitted. I was scared you'd leave, that you'd judge me for what I did back then, but I couldn't keep it from you any longer. You deserve to know who I was, and who I am now. I stood up and walked over to the window, staring out at the dark sky. A million thoughts raced through my mind, memories of our three months together, moments of laughter, passion, and connection. I thought about all the times we had stayed up talking late into the night, sharing our hopes and fears. I thought about how she had opened up to me, about her upbringing, her traumas, the life she had led before we met. You said it was just once, I said quietly, not looking at her. It was, was. I swear, just that one time, in that one relationship, and I hated myself for it. I never did it again, not even when I was in other relationships. She was still crying, her voice pleading for understanding. Please believe me. I know I messed up, but I'm not that person anymore. I've been trying so hard to change, to be better. I want to be someone you can trust. I turned around and looked at her, really looked at her. Her face was blotchy from crying, her eyes red and puffy, but behind the tears, I could see the sincerity, the pain. She wasn't asking for forgiveness out of convenience or because she got caught. She had willingly opened up, knowing the risk. She could have kept it hidden, but she didn't. That meant something, didn't it? But the question was, was it enough? I don't know, I said honestly, my voice barely above a whisper. I don't know what to do with this. I need time to think. She nodded, wiping her eyes. I understand. Take all the time you need. I wanted to hold her, to comfort her in that moment. But I couldn't. I couldn't reconcile the woman in front of me with the one she had just described from her past. It felt like there was a crack in the foundation of our relationship, and I wasn't sure if it could be repaired. As I lay in bed that night, staring at the ceiling, I wondered if trust was something that could be rebuilt from the ground up, or if some fractures were too deep to ever truly heal. The next few days were a blur. I distanced myself from Emma, needing space to process everything. I tried to focus on work, on my usual routines, but the conversation haunted me. It felt like a weight I couldn't shake off. I replayed the night in my head, over and over again, analyzing every word, every tear, trying to make sense of how I felt. Part of me wanted to forgive her, to move forward. After all, we all had pasts, right? And Emma had been through hell and back. She wasn't the same person she was back then, she had made that clear. But another part of me, the part that had always prided itself on having strong moral boundaries, couldn't let it go. I found myself reaching out to a close friend, someone who had known me for years and whom I trusted with my deepest thoughts. When I told him what had happened, he listened carefully, his face serious. Dude, that's heavy, he finally said after a long pause. But honestly, it sounds like she's been through some serious trauma. I mean, grooming? Being cheated on herself. That stuff messes you up. I nodded, appreciating his understanding. Yeah, but how do I know it's not going to happen again? How do I know she's really changed? That's the thing, man. You don't know for sure. No one does. But she came clean, didn't she? She didn't have to tell you. She could have kept that buried. The fact that she's being upfront means she's trying to build something real with you.